As standard, the Commodore VIC-20 displays 22 columns by 23 rows. Uh, this was a great compromise to keep the cost down for the machine. However, for some purposes it can be a bit limiting, and a number of extensions have been developed to display 40 columns on the screen. Uh, so it does this by remapping the screen and displaying um, two characters per character space. So the um, so these extensions need an extra 8K RAM expansion to be able to do this. And uh, they work as little machine language programs that you load and then you can uh, they take over the basic printing routines. As a bonus, I also want to show another little program that rather than extending the screen to 40 columns, it extends it to just 25, which uh, is only um, three extra characters, but it does provide uh, that bit of extra space uh, without uh, making the character font too small. The first program I want to show is called, is called either Vic40 or Fat40. The uh, confusion arises because on the Zimmer's website it's uh, listed as Fat40 and when I run Fat40 it comes up with uh, Fat40 in its uh, display, uh, display header. However, if you look at that, uh, if you look at Ahoy magazine from October 1984, uh, there's a program which seems to be compatible with the demo that comes with the uh, uh, Fat40 demo, uh, which is really the Vic40 demo. I'll explain by uh, showing. So if we run this, and there we are, we can see Fat40 extension, six of, uh, so June 13, 1983. And you can also see that with our 8K RAM expansion, we've got uh, 4,466 bytes free. So I'll load the demo. And this is the demo that was on the uh, Zimmer's website. But we can see already that we have 40 columns across uh, using this smaller font, which is still quite readable, I think. And this demo shows quite well uh, how it works. So the one thing you will notice is that this extension is dated 1983, but the Ahoy magazine was 1984. Uh, the, um, a link to the article is on the uh, Tech Tinkering website. A link to the Ahoy magazine article is uh, linked to on the article for this on the Tech Tinkering website. In any case, I run this Fat40 demo. And you can see Ahoy magazine, Vic40 it calls it, and 1984. So I don't know why we've ended up with two different names for it. Uh, but in any case, it seems to be the same program. It works fine and just helps us through uh, what, Vic, uh, what Vic40s are capable of and there's uh, lots more information in the uh, in the Ahoy magazine article. So yeah, you can see it uh, provides the full, the full character set and uh, it also provides some level of pet software compatibility. The pet software compatibility is pretty good actually um, and actually can't provide uh, compatibility with basic version 4 which uh, many pets have but it does provide other forms of compatibility so it shifts the screen memory and uh, allows you also to use some of the uh, sound pokes as well uh, but we can hear see in this demonstration now that we have the um, the ability to draw uh, characters, uh, draw pixels over the um, over the screen. And of course, these are simulated pixels by altering uh, the, the font, but still, it works really well. Right, so if I come out of the demo and I want to give a quick demonstration of some of the uh, uh, some of the little interesting things. So uh, the pet compatibility is really what I wanted to show. So if I poke into screen memory 
So uh, that begins at uh, location 32768. And if I poke uh, 65 into there, the character A. Uh, oh, yes. If I do that again. Right. Okay. And that's just because we're using the other character set. So if I do a poke. And there we are. So if I poke in uh, 59468, we change the character set to upper, to a um, lower case. And I can do the same by changing it to 12. And there we are. We can see the characters now are displayed in the upper case when I go over them. Or if I uh, type something new. There we are. And that's the reason for the difference between uh, the 65 poking the, the uh, graphic character there or or put in the A. But in any case, that demonstrates how uh, the pet compatibility works. So uh, FAT40 works really well. And I have uh, increased the uh, VIC20's uh, memory to uh, 24k. I added a bigger RAM expansion uh, because I want to show a spreadsheet program being used. Uh, this spreadsheet was written in BASIC and uh, we'll load that now. And then you'll be able to see the 40 column mode being used in this spreadsheet. That. The spreadsheet is quite slow. It is written in BASIC after all. So it seems to update the whole screen every time you move a character. But in any case, we'll put that in. So And we can see how our 40 column mode works. Well, as you can see, spreadsheet unfortunately is painfully slow, but that's more to do with spreadsheet than it is to do with the uh, FAT40 utility. But I just wanted to show how the extra 40 columns can be useful, as uh, if you were doing this with just 22 columns, it would be a lot more tricky. So yeah, all in all, uh, a great little program from uh, Ahoy Magazine or wherever Ahoy Magazine got FAT40 from which I guess is what, what originally happened. And uh, if you like the pet, uh, the pet compatibility mode as well, then you might find this useful. The next program I want to show is Pet Loader, which comes as a cartridge for PAL systems and is available on Zimmers. So the great thing about a cartridge is, of course, as soon as you boot up the VIC-20, you're in 40 column mode. And uh, Pet Loader, presumably from the name, is designed to be able to provide some level of pet compatibility. Although if it really only patches BASIC, and again, doesn't alter it to BASIC 4. So it works okay, uh, but, um, but the pokes don't work. So if I demonstrate the sort of pokes that we would be able to use um, with VIC-40 without any problems. So if I do a poke 
to screen memory. So that would normally prevent, uh, print a top, uh, sorry, a character A at the top left of the screen on a Commodore PET or when used with VIC-40, it would do the same. But as you can see here, it hasn't done anything. So, um, so it really just provides a level of PET compatibility through, through the uh, basic interpreter. But, um, but still, it's a cartridge and, uh, and that can make it easier to use. I've had to switch to an NTSC screen for, uh, for the next one, which is screen 40. And that's because the version on the Zimmer's website is specifically for an NTSC screen and the others were for PAL uh, displays. So I'll load screen 40. And it's much the same as Pet Loader and uh, VIC-40. Uh, in some respects, despite the name, it's got more in common with Pet Loader because it doesn't provide the level of pet support that uh, VIC-40 does. So, uh, as you can see, it looks much the same as uh, VIC-40 and Pet Loader. Uh, one big, or slightly different, is that from our 8K RAM expansion, it uses 653 fewer bytes. So we've got a little bit more room to play with. So uh, that's quite nice. we do and uh, yeah so there we are so it's a nice little program and it's quite quick to update the screen and um, gives us that little bit more room that uh, the other programs don't. For the last pro uh, the last 40 column extension I want to show I've switched back to a PAL screen and uh, this program is called Super Screen. It uh, comes on tape and was supplied, uh, was sold by Audiogenic. There's a, a link to a review of it in the uh, Commodore magazine from 1983. That link's on the uh, Tech Tinkering website article uh, accompanying this. It's in the uh, notes below. So if I load that from tape and then run that. So this should have been my favourite program because it's got the nicest font and um, and it's got um, more memory free than uh, than Vic 40. So um, so yes, it should have been good. The problem with it is though here we are. Every time it prints a line it prints an extra return character for some reason. And there we are, so we end up with that, which is a bit of a shame. There is a way around it, but it is a bit, a bit cumbersome. If I load the demo off the tape, and run that, and there we are, this is the demo for, uh, for Super Screen. And you can see that there we have got uh, lines being displayed without the extra columns. Um, but uh, the main reason I want to show this is because, uh, show this demo, is because the font is much nicer than the ones for, um, or at least I think it is, uh, for the ones for Big 40 and Super Screen and Pet Loader. Uh, sorry, uh, Super 40 and uh, Pet Loader. Uh, so uh, I'll let this demo run through. And this is the only commercial program out of these uh, out of these few. Um, this is also the only one that's not on the Zimmer's website. Uh, there's a link to a tape image uh, that I found. I'm pretty fa pretty sure I found it on the um, a link to from the denial forum. The things like a word processing program, of course, are clearly going to want to have extra columns, and will benefit uh, from the 40 columns as you can see here. Uh, 
and this is definitely usable. Uh, these 40 columns are still very usable. usable. Particularly if you've got a fairly big television. Even on a 14 inch, it's still so absolutely fine. And there we are. That's the, uh, the demo completed. As a bonus, I want to show one last program, and that's called uh, the, uh, the Big One. Uh, this isn't a 40 column extension. Instead, it uh, increases the number of columns that we have across the screen, but using the normal VIC 20, uh, the normal VIC 20 character font. Uh, so it extends it to 25 columns, which is just about as much as you can get reliably on a uh, on, on a standard television set. Because of, uh, otherwise, it will start disappearing off the, off the sides of the screen. And uh, this is hosted on the uh, Zimmer's website. It's uh, a PAL version. And this the this little program I've run here just talks you through why it's created. So it explains how you can get the 25 columns across the screen, but then you run into a number of problems. So therefore, it shows you how to overcome those problems with a bit of basic code that it supplies, that you can then put in your own programs and use to uh, to get these extra 25 or these extra columns. So now if we press that. It'll load the program and you'll say, see that it widens everything. And now we have 25 by 30 columns, which is, um, uh, well, for some programs, it may be better than actually switching as far as 40 because you get a bigger font, uh, you get a nice clear display. And as long as it fits on your television set without any problems, that may be a better, a better answer than going all the way to the 40. But uh, horses for courses, I guess, and depending on your need, uh, will depend which one of these will be the best one for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed looking at some of these uh, 40 column extensions. Uh, as you can see, they've all got uh, different pros and cons, and, um, and are useful for different purposes. But uh, if you want to extend the number of columns that you have uh, using a basic program, then they're a good go-to for this to help you. Uh, with the VIC-40, there's some also some information about how to use that from uh, machine language on the, um, the Ahoy magazine article, which is linked to in the, uh, the Tech Tinkering article accompanying this. So uh, do have a look at that article to find out more about uh, each of these utilities. And do subscribe to the Tech Tinkering YouTube channel and have a look at some of our other videos.